familiar faces, our alumni and our current students and of course, you know, our prospective students who are going to join hopefully by Jing department. So before you, uh, before I start, um, you know, introducing the program, um, I would like to mention a couple of things about it. Um, first of all, engineering is a big part of bioengineering because the biggest, um, uh, you know, uh, when student comes in here and start a program, they may think that it's a biology, more biology related. However, engineering is a part, big part of it. And then we are trying to emphasize and then give all these engineering principles and teach all these engineering principles to you so that you can, uh, you know, have a good uh, understanding in uh, design aspect or uh, solving the engineering problems. So let's start with uh, what is bioengineering? What is bioengineer? Uh, basically, we are in between the engineering and living systems. And our ultimate goal is increasing the quality of life, you know, through designing new uh, products, uh, creating solutions for the current problems. So ultimately, we would like to create something that can uh, help humanity uh, for different uh, problems. And we are working with uh, in the area of energy, environment and healthcare. So, um, we are synthesizing information in many fields, including electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, computer science, material science, chemistry and biology. We are merging it and our curriculum is reflecting that um, uh, synthesis. And in our program, we work in the, uh, three broad areas, uh, orthopedic and prosthetics. Uh, medical device and equipment, and last but not least, pharmaceuticals, uh, artificial tissue, and implantable systems. So, when it comes to orthopedic and prosthetics, uh, we are going to, we are trying to, um, you know, create the design of this and then explain how, what kind of loads, for instance, are uh, exerted on the implant, you know, when patient, um, you know, step on it, uh, how much of these forces are going to be carried by the implant, how much force is carried by the bone or muscle. So we are trying to teach it. And then when we are doing it, we are going to use lots of knowledge in biomaterials. We need to know the strength of the materials, for instance. We are going to lots of knowledge in uh, design, design parameters. And we are trying to merge this and uh, ultimately uh, both orthopedics and prosthetics, uh, we are using lots of engineering uh, principles uh, to design them. Uh, besides the, uh, orthopedics and prosthetics, we also um, uh, design, bioengineers design lots of biomedical and, uh, devices and equipment that we use in our daily life in hospital or in hospital settings. And all of them are uh, possible for us to use uh, to, uh, in healthcare system because of bioengineers, because we are the one um, designing them and then implementing and then uh, see how we can improve the uh, quality of human life. Uh, besides um, uh, those, we also deal a lot of biopharmaceuticals, uh, tissue regeneration uh, purposes and implementable systems. Uh, we teach our students how to uh, design those kind of um, uh, systems, for instance, uh, cardiac stents. So, how big, how, how, what would be the diameter of the cardiac stent? How it is going to be expand? You know, what would be the pattern on this stent? Those are all possible questions that you can answer uh, through uh, attending the program. And the other exciting area is the tissue regeneration. Rather than waiting someone to donate their organ, we can um, involve, uh, in, you know, uh, we can create our own organ or tissues in the laboratory settings and then uh, implement back to the patient. So the whole concept of tissue engineering also uh, under the big overarching umbrella of bioengineering. 
So as I mentioned before, engineering is the central piece in the bioengineering, and we are merging, uh, you know, different concepts in different uh, engineering disciplines. For instance, from biomechanical, from mechanical engineering, we are um, uh, learning orthopedic implants, rehabilitation, and manufacturing. Electrical and computer engineering, we are learning mechanical sensors, uh, medical devices, and medical imaging. From chemical engineering, pharmaceuticals, tissue engineering, and organ, uh, artificial organs. And we are merging those main concepts in our program uh, to teach you uh, engineering principles from different disciplines. So you may ask, why you T by engineering? Um, so I would like to answer that question by covering three different categories. One is we are definitely providing student-centered, um, you know, program. Uh, it is very, very hard for uh, big colleges to see the professor or to talk to them or, you know, approach them. Uh, so we are providing this uh, kind of friendly environment for our students so that they can uh, approach and then ask question. Uh, we are very accessible faculty and staff are very accessible to the students. Also, we have dedicated advisor that can help you throughout the way, how, which courses you need to pick or what kind of flow chart you need to follow. When do you need to go to co-op? So we are, we have really good advisors uh, within the program. And we also have peer mentoring program where we couple uh, new students with uh, seasoned students so that they can teach you and navigate new students how to, uh, you know, approach different problems within the dormitories, within the department or within the campus. So um, peer mentoring are really, uh, peer mentoring program is really, really helpful for our new coming students. And also we have student advisor committee. We always get feedback every semester. We, um, we have a meeting with them and then listen that we have two representatives in every cohort. And then they tell us, you know, what is missing or what we are doing good so that we can get uh, constant feedback uh, every year. The other reason why you, why you need you, you need to pick uh, UT is we are creating integrated experiential learning uh, through co-op program. So this is a unique program. It's one on eight in the nation having a mandatory co-op program. Mandatory means that you need to complete at least three co-op in um, either in a corporate settings or research lab. Uh, so that you can uh, graduate. But mo in most of the cases for our students, bioengineering students, they complete four co-ops if they started in their freshman year. Um, and we are also providing research opportunities. Uh, some faculty, uh, they are uh, mentoring undergraduate uh, students in their lab and I'm providing opportunity for them to publish uh, during the uh, during their undergraduate year. This is really, really important, especially for the student who would like to do graduate uh, studies. Uh, we are also offering uh, hands on experience in the very first year freshman year. Uh, we introduce freshman design and innovation um, class, uh, both in fall and spring semester. In this classes, a student uh, do the ideation of the design project and then they prototype and then do some entrepreneurial activities as well. So this is uh, this is uh, really good because they get to know the faculty earlier in the program and then build some uh, connection with the program rather than taking only physics and chemistry courses um, from other side of the campus. So we also uh, providing uh, integrated senior design clinic when you hit the last year of uh, last year in the program in your senior year, you are just uh, merge all the knowledge you gain and then distill them and then use it in a senior design project. And uh, with the NIH, um, with the new NIH award we have in the uh, in the program. We are creating a pipeline, design pipeline from the freshman year to the senior year. So it's not like you are only going to do uh, 
learn or um, complete design in the last year, but you are starting in the first year, continue in second, third, and then fourth year, and at the end, create a really quality uh, design product. And the last uh, but not least, the reason you need to pick UT Bioengineering is Basically, we are uh, providing private university, private university education in public university setting. So uh, we are providing state of art laboratories. Uh, our um, laboratories are renewed uh, recently, uh, and then we are providing one on one interaction with faculty. And uh, there are lots of honor section in many courses. And um, most importantly, uh, low tuition compared to other uh, private institutes. So I would like to highlight one more thing. And this data it belongs a couple of years ago. It's not even updated, but still um, uh, it's valid uh, in terms of ranking. When we look at the private universities in the Ohio, for instance, Case Western, um, the tuition is really high. And when they graduate from bioengineering program, uh, their alumni can earn roughly sixty thousand uh, dollars. So, versus in our case, you know, one you are, you know, giving the fraction of what you would give to the case western, for instance, as a tuition. Yet the, your starting salary is close as their starting salary. So this makes a big difference when it comes to paying uh, the uh, the student debt and other things. So this is really uh, advantages when it comes to the um, after life uh, after the graduation. So uh, engineering experience is provided by uh, creating, uh, you know, involving different hands-on labs, uh, coursework, design program, and co-op. And uh, through co-op, we are providing real-world employment experience. So students can uh, devote one entire semester uh, to only work in the industry or research lab, and then they can experience um, how things work, so, you know, some students, they would like to continue a uh, PhD program or master program. So they mostly involve research laboratories. Uh, and most of our students would like to experience the uh, corporate settings. So they go and then involve big companies and those are paid positions. So uh, they, they, they have a chance to earn money uh, during the program. Uh, we also have, um, uh, different technical electives, so then if you would like to go a little bit deeper into certain area, uh, you can take those the elective courses and then learn more into that area. And we have hands on experiences uh, through bioengineering laboratories uh, and then they are recently renovated. So they are, uh, it's really, uh, you know, helpful. It's really helping for our students to learn not only through the lecture notes, but applying them in the lab and then seeing it and then calculating it. So it's really uh, um, helping them to understand the subject. Uh, also, two, sem two semester capstone design project where they learn how to design, uh, learn entrepreneurial activities, and then uh, financial analysis. They do business model. They create a business model. So uh, from the initiation of the idea to the uh, patenting, uh, they are trying to understand the entire process in this uh, capstone design projects. So let's look at the laboratories. Uh, so we have bioinstrumentation lab where students build circuits uh, to read signals from the human body uh, and to amplify and then process those signals. Example is EC, uh, ECG devices and pulse oximeters. So those are the possible um, you know, devices that can be uh, Build and then learn how to operate them uh, you, by uh, completing this lab. Biomechanics lab, this is relatively new lab. It's not new anymore. It has been there for a while, but newer compared to other two. In this lab, students measure and analyze human motion and they understand uh, the strength of implants uh, using the mechanical testing. 
bioprocessing lab. Uh, in this lab, student culture live organisms manipulate the DNA, characterize, uh, and then uh, evaluate the data, characterize the collected samples, and uh, giving lots of hands-on experience in the uh, wet lab setting, so they know they are going to learn how to pipe it, how to create the standard curve. So this is really helpful for them uh, for um, for upcoming years. Uh, so bioengineering design courses, as I mentioned before, there are two of them. One is offering the first year, the other one is offering the last year. So they are going to pick up their own projects, uh, project ideas, and uh, it is really helpful for them to understand how to uh, navigate uh, different uh, conflicts within the team, design team, how to solve it, and then how to move forward with the project, because ultimately, even for the freshman design, uh, prototyping is a crucial part of the process. So we don't want our student to design unicorn, right? So you can design anything, uh, but if you are going to able to prototype or not, that's a different question. So uh, what we observe during the prototyping phase student realize that you know they need to modify certain things about their design in order to prototype so therefore uh, we made it mandatory in the even freshman years to uh, create prototyping of their design and this is really fun prototyping part of it because they learn how to use 3d printer laser cutters so then they can build up their design and they really enjoy when they hold their design ideation ideas in their hands at the end of the process they really enjoy it and um some of our students uh, would like to go to medical school and we are a permit program so they can um, they can start uh, taking a couple of uh, different courses than uh, their friends so then they can uh, continue with the medical school. And our bioengineers have a higher prob probability of uh, medical school acceptance than other premed majors. Um, and uh, their t technical and research skills, skills are highly desired. Um, and then they can be a great doctor. So some of them are already graduating. Um, Jay is going to talk about that. And then uh, we have other students already finished their residency and then they are working as a doctor already. So we are really successful sending our students to medical school. Some students would like to go to graduate uh, program and we are also preparing for them. So we are offering, as I mentioned, research opportunities for those students to involve. They can do experiments, they can uh, learn how to write uh, technical papers, how to do technical presentations, um, and then they can publish uh, their work in a reputable uh, peer review journal so that they can really have a good resume when they apply for the grad schools. And uh, roughly 25% of our graduate students uh, would like to grad school either at UT or other uh, really good universities. And some students would like to go to MBA and then uh, law school as well. So uh, corporate education is, a, is an important and integral part of the program. So we offer um, in both semester, fall and spring, and also summer semester uh, co-op program. Fall and spring is a 15 weeks program, and uh, summer is a 12 weeks program. And we can alternate the work assignment with coursework. So for every student, we prepare a floor chart, uh, explaining when when they need to go to co-op, uh, what car courses they need to take before that, because some of them are prerequisite before co-op, and then how they need to finish uh, the entire program uh, without a hiccup. So, um, an uh, important part of the co-op uh, is, you know, roughly 30% of of our graduates uh, so far went directly to the industry. So they got offer 
even before they graduate. And those offers are, are coming from co-op employers uh, usually. And this is really um, advantage because when you think about it, you don't have to worry about finding a job. You are uh, stress-free in your last year. And uh, so this is a really good opportunity for them uh, finding a job even, even before graduation. So uh, for the last um, for the last uh, two years, we initiated clinical emerging co-op as well, and this is an NIH funded project. Uh, so this project, they our students spent ten weeks in the clinical departments, and uh, additional three weeks at the campus. So idea is our goal in this program is uh, to understand what kind of design improvements can be done in the medical devices uh, in the clinical settings. Because sometimes um, doctors, if they are not from engineering background, they have a great idea uh, about the design, but they they don't they may not know how to where to start or they are, they don't have enough time to start even. So we are sending our students to spend 10 weeks with doctors, uh, residents and nurses uh, to understand the design constraints because we engineer uh, may think that, okay, this is a great design, but maybe it's not even applicable for, um, you know, in clinical settings. So they are letting us know what are the requirements uh, that we need to follow in our design in order to apply in the clinical settings. And we are, they are going there, spending 10 weeks, and then they fill out ideation journal. So this journal helps them to identify research projects for senior design um, uh, projects. So this is important because we are basically creating a pipeline here for senior design classes. So in order to improve the quality of the senior design projects. So before hitting their senior design year, they would know already what kind of project they, they need to work on. Uh, because uh, ideation process takes a lot of time in the senior year and sometimes it's rush. So the, it's affecting the quality of the project. But since they are involving clinical immersion co-op before senior year, when they hit the senior year, they know what they need to design. And unfortunately, we are not able to send everybody to the clinical immersion co-op, but uh, for the student uh, whom we sent, they are uh, acting as a project leader. Uh, so they can couple with four or five other students and then lead them during the senior design project uh, with the idea that they acquire from the uh, clinical settings. So this is a really helpful uh, for our students. So last year due to pandemic, we were on only sent seven students and they did uh, ten, they spent 10 weeks in orthopedic surgery department at UT. However, we partner with ProMedica, uh, which we are planning to start next year. Due to pandemic, they were not feeling comfortable accommodating students. However, next summer it will be uh, different. Uh, so, uh, for all this co-op program, we have an office dedicated um, uh, to find a placement for our students. We are also offering professional development course where our students can learn how to uh, craft their CV, what, what kind of things they need to, um, you know, uh, they need to prepare for the co-op, uh, how they need to run their co-op interviews. So we are all teaching them before uh, they hit the co-op. And then we are offering full and spring career fairs. So uh, big companies are coming to the campus and then they interview with our students for their, uh, for their co-op replacement. And these are all uh, happening at the cam on campus interviews. And announcements are available uh, for different positions, co-op um, director, sending uh, to our student different announcements when they have it, and then helping our student to find their co-op uh, placements.
And these are a couple of companies uh, we send our students for co-op and the, these are representative, some of them. So as you can see, they are all over the uh, nation. So it's not, they are not local companies. They are in, in fact, international companies and we are really getting uh, great feedbacks uh, from these companies about our students and we are very, very proud of them. Okay, I talk enough <laughs> about the program. I think you need to hear from our students and alumni um, how uh, they are experiencing the program and then whether it's helpful or not for them. So we can start with Evan. Um, Evan, can you unmute? I'm going to turn your slides on. Yep. Okay, perfect. Evan is a, um, a sophomore student this year. Uh, he finished his first year, uh, freshman uh, year. Uh, and then he involved uh, undergraduate research even in their first year. Uh, Evan, I'm giving the floor to you so you can uh, talk about your experience at UT. Bioengineering. Okay. Please. So, yeah, uh, my name is Evan Rupke, and I am a sophomore bioengineering major with a minor in entrepreneurship. And I just finished my freshman year. So, some of the things that the BioE department does really well is they provide you with a lot of resources to help you succeed. Uh, like one of the amazing things was when I was struggling in like in one of my classes. One of the first people I reached out to was like Dr. Ryan or my other bioe professor was Kelly Marball. And they instantly gave me help right away. And they were very instrumental in allowing me to do well in my classes. And another thing that they really helped me out with was I was very interested in research from a very early on. And so my freshman year, I emailed Dr. Ion about potentially involving in her lab, and I've got nothing but support. And one of the amazing things is that my professors have put me in a really good position to succeed. As far as like research goes, you have to submit an undergraduate proposal, and I was able to write a rough draft for an undergraduate proposal, but I can send it to my professors and when I did that they they showed me exactly what the reviewers are looking for and what everyone is looking for and so I was able to tailor my paper to what they wanted which was really really helpful in eventually getting that proposal accepted and after you get it accepted then I was able to participate in undergraduate research over the summer for my first co-op and one of the really unique things was that I was able to involve in a lot of extra things that I'm interested in outside of the class. Like, yeah, I take your typical chemistry and your physics and your calculuses, but those were all such core things that I didn't find as much of interest as I did in research. And over the summer, I really got to interest myself into spine research, which was really close to me because my dad had like lower back pain when I was younger. So I really got to pursue that interest of trying to find something better for spine research. And through that process, I got to meet so many people. And in our department, everyone kind of treats each other like family. Like you often hear professors call your fellow students as friends and it's amazing because I got to meet with older graduate students who have been there for me to help me out when I have any questions at all. And I've been able to re, uh, meet a lab instructor that I've been able to have a, more of like a friendship with rather than just like a like teacher student relation. So like the undergraduate research co-op has allowed me to really meet a lot of people on a more personal level. And so I just think it's been a really awesome experience and all stemmed from the BioE department really trying to look out for me. And so a little bit like about my project, you can see on like the bottom right, 
we attempted to regenerate some pig discs and we did that by implanting this special scaffold with cells into a degenerating disc and even in my first year I can see a little bit of improvement as on the left there's a little bit of a degenerative track and on the right you don't see that anymore and like I'm telling you it is an amazing feeling to feel like you are making a difference especially this early in your career and like I haven't heard of a lot of other majors being able to do that but I know two or three BioEs that are already involved in research who have already done great things and so I think it all stems from having that faculty look out for you and then on the other hand not only research has been great but I've also got a lot of support and experience from FIRE, which is our first rock, first year rocket engineering. And that's with uh, John Pilecki. And it's an amazing opportunity because you're able to get a leadership role as a freshman, because everyone is freshman in this organization. And it's just a beautiful experience because it's a really even playing field. So if you want to put yourself out there and you want to try and excel, then you're able to. And if you get put in one of those leadership positions, it is amazing because Mr. Pilecki really allows you to try ideas and try things for the students. Like one of the things that I really enjoyed in my freshman year was we created a scavenger hunt where we had different clues and then all of the students would have to go and take a picture with that clue, like the logo outside of Ottawa East. And we were able to set that up and seeing people send pictures in has been awesome. And it's been amazing that you can lead something and go through all of the challenges and solve all of those challenges to produce something special for your fellow students. And then finally in the BioE program, one of the really cool things that we have for freshmen in particular is freshman design. Most of your classes your freshman year are more dealing with uh, sciences and mathematics, but freshman design is really unique in the fact that it's very much your own project. Like you're very much doing what you want with it. So my group created a grabber system and it was amazing to be able to work with six or seven different bioengineers and we're all working on the same project to help some random need that we find. And the BioE program in particular just has really a really unique role in a college to where if you want to succeed and if you re and if you are interested in something, they allow you to excel in whatever you want to excel in. And so overall, I just really want to tell you that BioE is an amazing program and it'll be perfect for you. Okay, thanks, Evan. Thank you. Okay, Marcos, so can, can you share your experience with us? Okay, we're having a little trouble with Michael. We need to get him unmuted. He's in the attendees because his computer was crashing when okay. he- Okay, we, we, uh, we can go with Taylor while Michael is uh, working with the technical difficulties. Yes, Taylor, uh, can you share your experience with us? Yes. I can't believe you graduated in 2019. It's just, I know. You know, I just remember you were in the sitting in the senior year. Oh my God! Yes, it feels please. like it. Time flies for sure. I was just thinking that. <laughs> <laughs> please go ahead. Okay, thank you, <clears throat> everyone. Uh, my name is Taylor Beck, and I graduated from the program in 2019. Um, but I went into bioengineering because I loved math, science, engineering, but I also really liked the healthcare aspect of it. And then I got a minor in business administration because I knew I wanted to work in industry. So I kind of wanted to go in having that high level understanding of the business. 
Um, but today I'm going to tell you about my career experience so far, starting with my co-ops when I was in college and then up until where I'm at today. Um, so as Dr. Ian just mentioned previously, we were required to complete three co-ops in the program. Um, but I actually don't think I realized entirely how important and beneficial those co-ops were for me until about a year before graduation. I knew I was getting a really great learning experience, but I was also creating an awesome network of people um, who were able to support me and help me when it came time to look for a job and even now in my current role. Um, I did two back-to-back co-ops at Johnson & Johnson Vision in Jacksonville, Florida in the Material and Supplier Engineering Group right after my sophomore year. I uh, made the move from Ohio where I had lived uh, almost my entire life to Florida and I'm so, so glad I stepped out of my comfort zone to do that. I, I actually always talk about this being a turning point for me because it helped kind of lead me to where I'm at today. But during my time there, I worked to qualify new suppliers for our raw materials. Um, and this is at where I'd first heard about the J&J &J Gold program, which I'll talk about in a little bit. Um, but then I did two back-to-back co-ops at Boston Scientific in Spencer, Indiana. One is a manufacturing engineer co-op um, and the second as a process development co-op. And I was able to have great hands-on experience on the manufacturing floor there, which they make their endo and neuro devices there. And then about a year before graduation is when I seriously started to think about what I wanted to do after um, I graduated. And I had always remembered my time at J&J &J and my interest in the gold program. So I ended up applying and this is kind of what took me on my journey this far. So I graduated in May and I started at J&J &J in June. Um, the gold program stands for Global Operations Leadership Development Program. And it's J&J Supply Chain Rotational Program. Um, this had appealed to me so much because I knew I wanted to work at a healthcare company, but I wasn't entirely sure doing what. Um, there's so many different paths that your career can take you. So I wanted to learn about the different functional areas and operating companies within J&J. &J. You do three rotations in various supply chain roles um, uh, throughout the company. So my first rotation was as a quality engineer um, in the operations group back at Johnson & Johnson Vision, um, where we make contact lenses. I worked on the validation side of quality, which um, when you bring in a new manufacturing line or a piece of equipment, it has to be validated. So I kind of worked on that stuff in that role. So lots of data analysis and technical writing. And it's during this rotation that I really learned how much I liked working in quality. Also living in Florida, I grew up in Ohio, um, but definitely can go without having a winter ever again. <laughs> Um, my second rotation was with Janssen, our pharmaceutical company, and so I moved up to Philadelphia, where I live now, uh, to work in Titusville, New Jersey, but I did that ro uh, role completely remote because of the pandemic, but um, in that role, I worked on a global team to launch products into countries all over the globe, and this was a really rewarding uh, role because I got to manage launches and work with the local operating companies to get products to patients in various countries. And then in my third and current rotation, um, my title is a JJOS deployment lead, but that stands for Johnson & Johnson Operating System, which is a set of business process standards, tools, trainings, um, based off the lean methodology, if you're familiar with lean, um, but it's really to standardize the way we work across the supply chain um, as a whole. And then um, I get to travel a lot in this role, a lot. <laughs> Um, to kind of deploy this methodology at our distribution centers um, or perform activities to ensure the practices are being sustained. I've got to travel to Colorado, Tennessee, Florida. I'll be traveling to New Jersey soon. Um, and it's just been a great role for me to learn about distribution operations um, and how to effectively manage change and um, lead projects. And then at the beginning of next year, so I'm finishing up that program in December, um, I'll go back to where I started on the quality operations team um, as a senior quality engineer. Um, it's been really awesome to work for J&J &J and kind of see the supply chain from various points of view and where my kind of career path can take me in the future. But I guess I'll just end with, I'm also so thankful for my co-ops during uh, my, my time at Toledo that connected me with the company um, and the great people that work there. 
So. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you so much. Yes, Jay, let's uh, listen. Medical school, you know, someone from medical school, how department uh, prepare you for that? Please. Go ahead. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so my name is Jay Koch. I'm a third year medical student, uh, still here at the University of Toledo. I stuck around. So I'm in my eighth year in Toledo now. Um, and I really can't think of a better program to prepare someone for medical school. Um, before I go into that, I'll share a quick story. Um, I was on my neurology rotation last, and uh, there was just some small talk between the neurologist I was with and the nurse we were working with and just getting to know each other. It was my first day. And the uh, neurologist mentioned how she had a friend who was an engineer, and she said, oh, man, I messed up. I should have went and been an engineer. They're making all the money. They got the nice job. They don't have to be on call. They don't have to deal with patients. Um, and I was just chuckling, and she didn't know that I had an engineering background. And um, so she, her being an established neurologist working with stroke um, was jealous of us bioengineers. <laughs> <laughs> from a lifestyle aspect. Um, but yeah, I, I really do believe that bioengineering is one of the best preparation you can, you can get for medical school. Um, and I'll say that because some of the harder classes I had to take in my couple years, I really had a huge leg up um, compared to my classmates who may have had biochemistry or biology as their undergrad major, because those, uh, those majors had an advantage kind of right at the start at the beginning of medical school when you're learning all the biology and really i just think that's pure memorization you're just memorizing facts you're filing them back in your brain somewhere you can regurgitate them um, but engineering really taught me how to think um, it taught me how to understand and think through the physiologies um, to think through how does the body work and so that's how you can understand really how the body goes wrong so really after the first couple months the rest of um, the next few months of medical school, we're learning about cardiology, we're learning about respiratory systems and um, electro conductance of the, neuro of the neuro system. And man, this is all stuff I learned in engineering. And the, the hardest class my classmates struggled with was cardiology and understanding, man, how do fluids work in the system under these high pressure systems and low pressure systems and this pump that has some organs in, in parallel, and then you throw in these different resistances as the body changes, and they were just lost, and I was cruising. I hit cruise control during that class because I had literally taken a class called biotransport, which studies how blood throws throughout, flows throughout the body. Um, so yeah, I think engineering prepared me great for, for my role um, in medical school now. Um, I too did a, a co-op with Johnson & Johnson. I worked in their joint reconstruction um, and it was an awesome co-op, did, uh, did three rotations there. But the best thing I learned from it that I wasn't actually that good of an engineer and I was a much better student and wanted to keep, lear wanted to keep learning. Um, and I'm thankful for my co-op for that aspect because I got a full year of experience where I knew what this engineering role would be like, um, but just knew that my giftings were a little bit more geared towards patient care. Um, than the technical side. And if I hadn't had the co-op experience, I would have had to find out that lesson the hard way in my first year um, out of college. So I'm glad to get that experience during college. And there's a little baby in the middle of my slide because now I hope to be a pediatrician. Um, I wanna be a part of that team um, that is with the parents, with the family, whoever's there to care for this vulnerable little child. Um, that's who I wanna be on the front lines for. Um, but it's also there because I, uh, I have my first child on the way and I met my wife at my first co-op. And so <laughs> I can't say enough how thankful I am for that co-op <laughs> um, for reasons that didn't really line up with my career, but have really lined up with my family life. Um, so that's a little bit about why bioengineering has been such a uh, enjoyable run for me that's still paying off um, in the clinical setting. Okay, thank you, Jay. Congratulations. <laughs> awesome. Alexandria, yes, let's uh, hear from you. Yeah, so hi, everybody. My name is Alexandria Sinistva. I graduated from the University of Toledo bioengineering program with a minor in entrepreneurship in May of 2021. 
Um, I chose Toledo because I knew that the co-op program would give me practical work experience. And I also liked the fact that it was two and a half hours away, which was perfect for me, but not so great for my mom. But I had to do what was right for me and my career. And the co-op program was great to convince her of that. I was heavily involved on campus with different engineering organizations like the University of Toledo Engineering Council and the Roy and Marsha Arms Engineering Leadership Institute. Uh, this involvement, um, I got to gain a lot of my really best friends, and I also got a good understanding of how I manage my time or don't manage my time, which came in handy when I went on co-op. So similar to Jay, I also did a co-op rotation with Depew Synthes in Warsaw, Indiana, as a process engineering co-op. I was responsible for working with operators on the floor, updating our manufacturing processes and improving them which I really liked because I was interacting with operators on a daily basis, and all of them were super nice. My second co-op rotation was with Boston Scientific, similar to Taylor, so you're sensing a trend here where a lot of us like to go where people have been before. Uh, I was in Spencer, Indiana as well as a co-op, a quality product services co-op, uh, which means that um, there are three sections that Boston Scientific breaks their quality department into, new products, sustaining, and testing. And I was able to get experience in all three of those, um, most notably working on the first to market uh, single-use duodenoscope or Model D that is on um, my slide. That was really awesome um, to kind of get that market understanding of a new product launch and then also getting an understanding of how those products were developed in a manufacturing space. I was intending on returning for a second rotation at Boston Scientific, but that was scheduled for the summer of 2020. So the career services team actually specifically developed a uh, alternative co-op class. So I was still able to get that co-op credit while gaining some practical experience. And I was able to still graduate on time despite a global pandemic. So that co-op team is really good about adapting to the world as it changes and making sure that we still get to graduate and still be successful. So now um, I've been officially a real person slash real engineer for about 100 days now. I just started working for Boston Scientific on their quality team where I did my co-ops. This uh, means that I specifically work on our EUMDR team, which means I'm working on remediations for our sustaining product lines for the changes made um, by the European Union uh, medical device regulations, which is basically the EU's FDA. Uh, I get to work with multiple different product lines, which I really love because I'm not just stuck on one line. I get to understand a lot of the product lines that we work with because we don't just have scopes. We also do retrieval baskets, which is pictured by the trapezoid. Um, I really like that I get to interact with a lot of different people. And I also get to work with a lot of our outside vendors to establish inspection contracts, which requires an understanding of our internal quality systems as well as design constraints. So I get to be that kind of middle person between the manufacturing people and the people who are like the vendors for that material that we're working with in the first place. Um, returning to a co-op that I can, or returning to a company that I completed a co-op with was really nice because it made that transition from school to full-time engineer really easy for me. I had a month between when my classes ended and I was graduated and like a, ending my engineering career to becoming a full-time engineer. And that was really awesome because I knew that I was entering into a work culture that I already liked. I knew that I had a support system there. And I also knew that the team that I was entering in would support my learning because you don't stop learning once you graduate college. You're just learning something different and in a different classroom. This classroom is now your work environment. And it's really nice because they're constantly supporting that learning. And they do that by encouraging me to take on new roles. I actually had the opportunity to travel back to the University of Toledo a few weeks ago to recruit co-ops to come work for Boston Scientific because they were so good at supporting me as a co-op and getting me to full-time that I now wanna help and do the same thing for our current students. I'll also be attending the Society of Women Engineers uh, National Conference here in a week, which is super exciting because I get to attend with a bunch of my coworkers and also meet women engineers from all across the country. And the fact that I'm not only being developed as an engineer in the workplace, they're also encouraging me to develop those professional skills and get the, give me those opportunities outside of the workplace is super important to me. So I'm super grateful for the co-op program because it allowed me this opportunity to get this job through a company that I know is going to continue my learning and help me to continue my learning. Great, great. Thank you, Alexandria. My name is Michael Petrovsky, and I'm a fourth year bioengineering student who's actually on a pre-med track. So just looking back at some of my experiences, um, 
even before like enrolling into the University of Toledo, I already had an interest in both medicine and engineering. So for me, when I was looking at what opportunities I had to eventually go into med school, um, the bioengineering pre-med pathway really kind of stuck out as something special. I had the idea that enrolling into the bio -E major would give me key insights into how medical equipment functions so that uh, maybe not all students would have before they go to med school. And it would also help provide me a more unique perspective on the medical field. And um, with some of my classes like biomaterials, biomedical instrumentation, tissue engineering, um, intro to biomechanics, I really think that this idea was fulfilled. Um, aside from classes, as a bioengineering student, you'll have the opportunity to engage in several co-ops, as was mentioned earlier. So for myself, I had a few different opportunities to learn about healthcare and a more in-depth environment. And while some of these were extracurriculars, like working as emergency department scribe, my last experience was actually obtained through the BioE department in a co-op. Um, so this last summer, I was part of the bioengineering clinical immersion co-op, and we spent 10 weeks observing and discussing ideas with physicians, physician assistants, residents, med students, and more at the UTMC orthopedic department. So um, this is something that is really unique about the University of Toledo. Their affiliation with uh, UTMC, the University of Toledo Medical Center, and Dr. Ada Yan's uh, efforts and everyone else in the bioengineering department is really kind of what enabled this co-op to happen. And over the course of this time, I was able to view not only a healthcare provider to patient interactions in a clinical setting, but I was also able to spectate numerous orthopedic surgeries. <laughs> in case anyone was wondering, yeah, for sure the first few procedures definitely get under your skin a little bit, but I promise it's worth it. Uh, for me, this was really part of what the clinical immersion co-op was about, immersing yourself in the field. So after all, um, us as future bioengineers have to see what medical professionals see, have to experience what they experience, and have to see what patients experience. This is how we uh, can come up with new innovative solutions and technologies to improve patient conditions. And this is how we bring the future one step closer to today, like how we build the world that we want to live in. Through this co-op, I was able to witness like the entire medical stay of a patient, not just surgical, not just surgical procedures, but um, pre-op visits, post-op checkups, like the whole journey through their treatment. So going back to those classes, I kind of rattled off a little while ago. This experience is what really helped bring theory to practice for me. The wide variety of procedures I ended up seeing, like hip and knee replacements and revisions, arthroscopies, ulnar nerve transpositions, trigger finger release procedures. The understanding I had gained from my classes was really elevated over this course of time. So overall, the goal of this co-op was to become immersed in a healthcare environment and to go through an extensive ideation process, just identifying unsolved issues or designing new solutions to existing clinical needs. And by talking uh, your ideas through with attending physicians and other practitioners, um, the other students and I who are involved in this co-op were able to really refine our ideas. And for me, uh, this idea is now being carried forward into my senior design class. So just one major benefit of this for bioengineering students at UT is being able to come into their major project with not only experience in like identifying problems and uh, novel solutions, but having pre-wedded design ideas. So bioengineering is, all around us and everyone here has been to doctors at some point and gone for blood drawn. Uh, who designed this syringe? When a doctor listens to someone's heart or lungs, who designs the stethoscope and uh, who redesigns these instruments to be more efficient, more cost effective, more user friendly? Um, like when your grandparents or your parents need to have a knee replaced or some procedure performed, who comes up with the design for the replacement, as well as the tools wielded by the skilled physicians so that would make that replacement happen. Bioengineering is such an integral part of the medical field. And if you're interested in seeing more, uh, learning more, and just pushing yourself to think outside the box, I would really recommend uh, University of Toledo's program to you, as well as the Clinical Immersion Co-op. Uh, thanks for listening. <laughs>
Thanks, Michael. Thank you so much. You know, thank you, uh, our alumni and current students for sharing your experience. We are very fortunate and glad you picked us. Uh, and I'm, I, I'm personally very happy being your professor and mentor in the department. OK, uh, so we can uh, next we can go uh, what to do. Uh, what do you need to do next uh, in order to uh, apply for the program? We okay, have, perfect. Uh, Clark, Clark uh, who has joined us and she's a regional enrollment manager. So, Cabrilla, if you could uh, talk a little bit about the next steps, uh, scholarships and so forth. So I will turn it over to Cabrilla. Thank you so much, everyone. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. Um, as John mentioned, my name is Cabrilla Clark. I am the regional enrollment manager for the Cincy and Dayton areas, as well as Kentucky. So if any students have joined us from those areas, welcome, but welcome all. Um, as far as the application and admissions process, so um, what do you need to apply? The good news is it's pretty simple for us. Um, our application fee is $40 and we are test optional so um, you're welcome to go ahead and apply if you haven't already if you're a senior and um, you don't have to submit test scores if you do choose to submit test scores that's fine um, those will not be considered for your merit scholarship so even if you submit them they will not be considered or factor into that merit scholarship that you'll automatically be considered for Additionally, we are rolling admissions, and so um, there's no hard application deadline. We just really encourage students to apply early um, for prior, um, priority financial aid consideration and to be considered for a maximum amount of merit scholarship. As the slide here reads, um, holistic review for as soon as possible um, admission, and so as soon as we get your documents and we're able to process you through, take a look at those, and ideally get you an admissions decision, we usually say um, within like two weeks or so. We also require a minimum 3.4 GPA for merit scholarship consideration. Depending on where you fall above that, you may be eligible for up to $6,000 in merit scholarship. Um, there's also an, the option for an out-of-state scholarship, the Rocket Nation Scholarship, which could essentially offset the out-of-state surcharge for us and have you paying just about what um, an in-state student would pay. So that's something to keep in mind as well. We also have kind of um, simplified our processes and um, made them more um, student focused by um, using super scoring. So we'll take the highest score in each of your categories and then create um, your new composite super score. So um, don't worry about having to, you know, do the back end work. We will do that on our end when we are processing your application. And then if we could um, go forward one slide there. Thank you so much. So as far as scholarships, we have many um, scholarship opportunities and the University of Toledo really prides ourselves on maintaining affordability for students. And um, one way that we do that is through a tuition guarantee. And so that locks in your tuition and general fees for the four years that you'd be at the University of Toledo. But beyond that, I've mentioned the merit scholarships. Those start at a 3.4 and go up from there to 6,000 potentially, just depending on that GPA. I've mentioned the Rocket Nation already, which is our out of state scholarship. Um, again, that is GPA dependent, so you may be eligible for that. And you're welcome to reach out to your admissions counselor if you do have questions about that one specifically. As far as the presidential scholarship, so this is our most competitive scholarship um, across campus. It does require um, a supplemental application and um, an interview process. We do require students to be admitted, um, have applied by December 1st. Um, and so that is a very competitive one. It includes tuition and room and board, um, your um, general fees, and then you also get a one-time scholarship to do either research or study abroad. Um, you have some choices and flexibility there. Again, that one does have a December 1st deadline. The Levis Leadership Scholarship, so this one students will take a class um, and it's a little more um, focused on, you know, developing those leadership skills, getting you involved across campus, um, opening kind of your perspective and um, view there. And that one allows for students to be eligible for a $1,000 scholarship the first year and then $750 the remaining three years. Um, that one also has a supplemental application. You would want to um, look out for that on our website or reach out to your admissions counselor. 
Um, we do have the general scholarship application through our Office of Financial Aid. That one you can actually input your specific GPA, the program that you're interested in, um, anything like that, those um, kind of factors that would determine, you know, which scholarships you would be eligible for. And it will generate a list of scholarships that you are eligible for. The good news is, is that you can apply for all of those at one time. So um, kind of saves you some time and effort of sifting through scholarship applications. And that can be found on our website, very simple to find. And then college and program specific scholarships. So each college and program may have specific scholarships that are unique to them um, that you would want to reach out to someone from the college about those opportunities. So um, those look a little bit different for each college, um, but definitely want to take advantage of any specific scholarships that the College of Engineering may be offering. So, and I think that is all I have. Thank you so much for allowing me to join in and kind of talk scholarships and admissions information. Hey, thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Okay, uh, do you have any questions for us? On the chat, and uh, the question yeah. was, is FIRE the first year rocket engineers? Is that just for bioengineering students or all engineering majors? And I'll be happy to answer that. Uh, Evan is the one that uh, mentioned about the first year rocket engineering group. And actually, Evan was a former president of the first year rocket engineering. And as far as the organization, it is open for all majors. So another nice benefit of this organization is you may be in the bioengineering department and you attend one of these meetings and you see somebody who's in your calculus class with you, but they ultimately aren't in your bioengineering class. Maybe they're studying mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. So it's an opportunity for you to network with individuals outside of the bioengineering program, but also to build a study group. So it's open to all majors. And if you decide to join us, we'd uh, certainly uh, enjoy having you as a member of the first year rocket engineers. John, I cannot see the questions. So is there any other questions for us? So there, there are no other questions at this point in time. However, for our guests, if you would like to ask a question, uh, feel free to put a question in the Q and A or in the chat. And I will monitor those for a few moments here. So feel free to put those in. And you can always send us an email, you know, um, and then, you know, you just listen, just digest it, what you have uh, listened. And then if something comes up after that, uh, please send us an email. Um, you can find my email address in, um, in Bioengineering website. Um, I will be more than happy to uh, answer your question. If I don't do not know it, then I can guide you who we can ask to, so that we can get the answer for you. Okay, um, John. If there is no other question, I don't want to hold our students and alumni. Um, you know, they can easily send us a question through email. I guess. Sure. Okay. Thank That's you, everybody. Yes, thanks everyone. Special thanks to Dr. Ion, as well as our alumni and our current students. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your evening today. And then our guests, thank you for joining us and learning a little bit more about the University of Toledo and the bioengineering department. Okay. Thank you. There was another question, I, another question I just saw pop up about scholarships. Oh, okay. Yep. Yes, I, I did just see that too, as we were about to log off. Um, I can answer that really quickly. Um, no, those are not the only scholarships. Um, if you go to the um, Student Financial Aid General Scholarship page, it will show you that's going to be the kind of all of the scholarships that are available to students. So um, you'll definitely want to check out some of the few. We just kind of highlighted some of the top and um, top scholarships that students are mostly interested in, but there are definitely many others located on that general scholarship page. And, and I will add, as far as the scholarships for the College of Engineering, there is one application that can be found on our financial aid website that you can fill out, and it'll just be one application to be considered for all the scholarships that we award from the college. So you do not need to worry about filling out multiple scholarship applications. So for our donor scholarships, it's one application, and that'll be it. All right, so I'm glad that we were able to catch that. Uh, any additional questions before we log off for the evening?
Okay, not seeing any questions come through. Again, we thank everyone for your participation this evening. And if there's any questions that you may have, uh, feel free to reach out and we'll be happy to answer any questions. But thanks a lot, everyone, and enjoy the evening.